Jenna Bass. Hi, I'm Liza Skulls. Hi, I'm Francesca Vari Michelle. Hi, I'm Lauren Lobsher. Uh, we're the team in Berlin that is behind High Fantasy. Yay. Do <laughs> <laughs> you know there's a pill for men now? Mm. Oh, really? Mm. To do what? It's like the pill for men. Get the fuck out of here. So I can smash a bitch and she won't get pregnant. Dude. Okay. You can't say that. What? You can't say smash. And you definitely can't say smash a bitch. What are you talking about? What? So your dad just smashed your mom, man? Nah, nah, it's not like that. Just smashed her hard, huh? And your mother's the bitch that your father smashed. Come on, y'all. Y'all know what I mean. We're all adults here, man. Okay, sure. and because we're adults, it means we must use phrases like smash a bitch. Why are y'all pretending like this shit ain't real? Girls want to get dick, bruh. I mean, you guys might be like this, but trust me. Oh. Girls are calling your boy all day for this big dick. Why y'all mad? Girls want to suck dick. It's all good. It is what it is. Do you understand the like, legacy right, of the system? And how you would think and how you were bred and allowed to think that women think that way of their own accord? And okay, even if women do think that way of their own accord, there's still a systematic mind rape at work here. And primarily, I do not think that women want to be referred to as bitches who get smashed by niggas in clubs. Mm -hmm. So like, I'm just wondering, did you do well in school? <laughs> did your mother teach you something? <laughs> Who is it? Who is in charge of your education? Who failed? Hello, I'm Hannah um, Congdon and I'm here with Jenna Bass, the director of High Fantasy and the cast of her film. Um, welcome everyone to the Berlinale. Thank Hope you. Hope enjoying Thank yourselves. You. Um, my first question was for you, Jenna. This is, so the idea of the body swap is quite an original way to look at gender and sexuality and race and the way that you do in this film. Where did you come up with the idea? What was the process for that? Um, so since about 2015, where I don't know, you know how much this, how much of this you heard in Berlin and in Germany, but um, since 2015, we've had been having a lot of student protests in South Africa that have been around inequality in general and, and access to education, but um, also a whole lot of different things and the 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 kind of the the wrongness of the state of South Africa and the way that things currently are. And uh, I was looking for a way to make a film that was about all of these things and it just occurred to me that the body swap story somehow integrate things like gender and race and class and land and all these issues that were being talked about by young people you know, for the past two, three years. And I was really interested in making a film that could speak to that, but in a way that wasn't going to make people go, oh my gosh, that's so heavy, and yeah. sort of trick people into talking about something very important. Yeah, because um, it's a plot that's almost used in comedy, but it's yeah, yeah, used exactly. to address Yeah, exactly. For me, it's really terrifying. Um, so, so, yeah, and this is that. And then also, I mean, what I found really disappointing about the body swap genre in general is that everyone always learns their lesson at the end. It's always like, we swap bodies, and now we understand each other, now we can go on with our lives. And I felt that that was not very much how real life works. Yeah. Just yeah. because you suddenly had insight into another person's world doesn't mean you're going to change or behave differently or be a better person. Yeah. So I wanted to show the South African experience in the body swap, which is, you know, that we haven't necessarily learned our lesson. And learning that lesson is really painful and hard, and it's not always going to be successful. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> and kind of continuing on that note, um, so it brings up a lot of questions about gender and sexuality um, and it challenges the idea of binary notions of gender and sexuality. Um, and one of the things I thought was really interesting was the idea that of asking does our body have any innate identity for gender or sexuality mm -hmm. or whatever it might be or is it purely what we project onto it um, mm -hmm. because with the different minds and the different bodies the bodies react in a very different way as we see mm -hmm. um, so, anyone? <laughs> yeah I mean you guys I mean you were actually experiencing it so mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to speak to that mm -hmm. do you want to go yeah, I was, um, Nala was in my, I was in Nala's body, so he was acting as me, and I was in yours, and, yeah. yeah you, you were acting, you were acting I was acting as Fran, so I was in <laughs> Fran's well, like, body. Well, like Lexi, not Fran. Yeah, Lexi, yeah. yeah. It's really confusing. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think, I think a body will always carry, carry the, the, like, the subject of, what, I don't know, you've got boobs, you've got a vagina, you've got a penis, whatever, that's what you have, or you maybe have both, or you, you know, transgender or whatever, but it's just a case, it's got a lot to do with, like, for instance, my character embodies um, a black female, mm -hmm. and like her anger and, and 
towards like her state of what, what she has to live in like having to embody that anger and what she feels every single day in reality in life because yeah. this, this film isn't make believe it's real yeah. Yeah. so it's having to feel see and what she goes through every single day and trying to like embody that because obviously mm. as a white privileged person you're not exposed to that yeah so it's like having that feeling all of that anger and like empathizing trying to empathize not yeah. actually empathizing it's trying to empathize mm. um it was very harrowing like i got really really angry yeah so it's and just me as a person not but as an actor like you get very very angry with the state of what people that other people are dealing with yeah so in terms of that in terms of race because mm. i didn't my gender didn't change yeah in terms of race like i really it made me very angry yeah as a person and it was interesting as well because um Soli's, um response to the um body swap is almost the most violent, the most distressed. Mm. Yes. Um, mm. And why do you think that is? You know, is that mm. It's to do with... It's to, it's to do with what, like, yeah. they've, black people, people mm. of colour have been oppressed for, like, mm. centuries, yeah. from, like, day one. Yeah. So, I mean, that explains everything. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just so much anger, and they rightfully so. Yeah. yeah. I think the last thing anybody wants to be is to be white right now in yeah. South Africa. Yeah. So exactly. I think as a as a black woman to be trapped almost yeah. inside a white woman's body and then have to now you know you can you can't be okay with it because that's the body that you're angry at. Yeah. You know, that's the body that's forced this injustice onto you and this and oppression. Yeah. It and and now you're inside it. it and that's what the world perceives you as. And yeah. it's it's this privileged body that beyond just the sexuality because you know you can't the gender and everything that's there mm. but i think immediately to be inside a white person's body it's like yeah it's the evil yeah, yeah. And <laughs> although they are still the most privileged yeah. yeah well yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's the thing is like who is it better to be yeah. which is yeah. also a weird question to ask yeah. the yes. film also i mean i think kind of consciously try not, doesn't try to answer that question but like brings up that question so yeah. i think it's something that you know alexi actually get asked gets asked that in the film mm. in, in, in one of the interviews she gets asked pretty much like would you ask yeah. no she you i you do ask you she asked she asked me yeah. <laughs> yeah. and it's like how does it feel to be yeah, yeah. and yeah. so we have a debate about like which is the better to be which is you know Weird, it's a ridiculous question, yeah. but also a very pregnant one at the same time. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, unfortunately, we don't have Bonnyswa and Nala here with us, who mm. were the two actors who actually who swapped two. genders. So yeah. Yeah. they can speak yeah. more to that. Yeah. But I know that Nala has been like very vocal about how he found the whole experience mm. really, really affecting, having to play uh, Liza's character, yeah. and then also because he was the only guy on set most of the time mm. um, and was a all female cast yeah. and crew otherwise so I think being around a woman and yeah. I mean also just made us all yeah kind of question these binaries like certainly yeah. a lot of the time because his when Tatiana's mind was behind his body the body behaved in a very different way. It was much more kind of fun. Um, yes, and we body. would study each other. Like we'd sit, like study each other, like see where the energy sits and how we yeah. walk and like try and embody that. Mm -hmm. so we didn't generalize a female body. Yeah. So yeah. even you know the gen generalized stereotype mm -hmm. of a female is like you can't throw a ball. Yeah. 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 And, but so or the sexuality. I don't yeah. think you can actually tell it's necessarily the sexuality yeah. of yeah. each yeah. character. Yes. And because it gets so confusing. Yeah, it gets yeah. so confused and it's not. It shouldn't be something that's obvious. Yeah, well, yes. that's actually a exactly. thing. Like, uh, okay, I'm, not, I'm probably making this question uh, answer a lot longer than it's supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I actually want to tell you guys something so I can't remember if I told you. But um, when we first did the auditions, Nala came in and he. What we were doing was doing improvisations where two actors would improvise characters and then they would swap characters. Yeah. So he had to swap with his, his partner in that audition was a woman and he had to then play her. And I yeah. said to him, you're not allowed to be a woman in any way that you associate with women. I don't want to hear your voice go high. I don't want you to sing to you doing yeah. this or any of those things. Yeah. But I want you to, and he's like, so I must be a woman mm. without that. And I was like, yes. And he, his audition was phenomenal. Like yeah. it was, I mean, I knew from that immediately. I was like, going in the film definitely because it's, yeah. it's exactly that as a thing it's like what are your associations with gender already yeah. and if you've got things that are too fixed you're never going to be able to participate in this film yeah so you have yeah. to have quite a flexible mentality yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Um, going back to the issue of race, because it's obviously such a big part of the film. Um, there's a lot of references to the 2016 riots and recent unrest in South Africa. Um, and I think it's towards the end of the film when Tommy says, um, the rainbow flag is bullshit. Do you guys agree? Is that the general, mm -hmm. like, kind of, does that reflect the yeah, your generation? I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I definitely yeah. agree that the rainbow flag is... I agree. That, well, the rainbow, yeah. not the rainbow flag, the rainbow nation, so-called. Yes is utter bullshit. <laughs> I feel like our people, our people of colour were oppressed and segregated and forcibly removed oh. from our homes, from our lands, from you know where, where we were brought up oh. and then removed so far away from resources, from white people, from privilege and then it's like okay but come guys let's move on, apartheid's over and it's like yeah. We're still the stuck. Our people are made. still yeah. stuck in those communities. We're still stuck yeah. without resources. Yeah. We still, we, so there's no ways that we can own land without it giving, being given back to us or percentage given back yeah. to us. So it's like, how do we move forward when nothing's been undone? Nothing yeah. been, nothing's been forgiven or given back. It's the same people in power, the same people with privilege. Mm. And we forget that South Africa seems like a black country because majority is black. Yeah. But when you live there, it feels like a white country. Yeah. Like Cape Town especially, yeah, Cape it feels like, yeah, yeah. feels like yeah. a white city. And yeah, so the Rainbow, the Rainbow Nation is it's a lie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was never a revolution, just an agreement. Yeah. Like, yeah. Let's, let's just get along. But there was never some sort of yeah, contact yeah. or yeah. shame. And the land issue that the comes land up, yeah, 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 that comes up in the film is—it's so important. I think when you see the the characters driving in, and you see like this vast amount of land that's like, to quote Tommy, like this is one man's land. Like, it's in, it's insane because our, like so many of our people are still stuck in the same communities that yeah. we had to live in, and there's there's nothing there. So there's no ways that you can climb up any ladder and, it, yeah, no, like there's enough land, there's enough land to give back, mm. yeah. And it seems like um, something that would maybe improve attitudes in South Africa in terms of race would be to be able to place yourself in the shoes of someone of a different skin colour or a different gender or whatever it might be. Um, and I was wondering how you guys found that as actors as a, something to do, to have to get it, that someone else's psychology. Um, mm. Not just on mm. one level of acting, but then the further level of the mm. other character. I guess I was Fran's character and like I suppose also being the white person on the, out, on the inside, she was inside of me mm. having to feel that guilt <laughs> and being made silent all the time, like yeah. wanting to speak but then also not being able to because I'm in a space with people of colour, yeah. you know, and, and almost feeling not worthy of being able to speak because she is a bit more, yeah, progressive in a well, way, like you work yeah. then, her, her character kind then, of. kind of, yeah, kind so, of. Yeah. yeah, I had to like, I suppose, play that silent role in a sense, yeah. Um, yeah, but still feeling all of it on the inside, yeah. yeah. But I think also that's the the question that the film ultimately asks and I intentionally doesn't provide an answer for is, you know, like, okay, so here are these young people, they've been given this opportunity to walk in each other's shoes and empathize with each other, but what good does that do? Yeah. Yeah. And what good does that understanding do? Like, what are you going to do as a result of it? Because, you know, we, we talk a lot and we argue a lot and we shout a lot mm. about things, but ultimately what are we doing about it? And so, I think, yeah, that's really the that question is that what good is this understanding or this empathizing going to do? And uh, yeah, the film doesn't really answer that, but you know, I think that's definitely on the audience yeah. to kind of go yeah, out and discuss it. Yeah. Yeah. Are you just going to go an back answer? and yeah. um, No, I mean, I'm overwhelmed by everything in our country on a day by day basis. I definitely don't have the answers, but what at least I hope the film does is normalize the, a lot of things, which the film kind of is very frank about, but I think is still very sensitive to discuss in, in South Africa and really anywhere in the, in the kind of con, you know, confrontational way we do in the film. So to normalize these discussions and make kind of 
make them happen in all possible spaces and not just in politicized spaces, yeah. so-called political spaces or so-called um, you know, spaces that are like set aside for that. In the cinema, in your bedroom, anywhere, mm. these things are important. So the film is yet another way of yeah. kind of like bringing that up and starting the conversation. I would hope. And not being received with an eye roll or like Yeah, yeah. and also yeah. being entertaining. I mean, we, yeah. I, I mean, I'm a filmmaker, I want to entertain people and I especially, you know, I want young people to see my films mm. and I want to entertain them and I don't want these things to be heavy or a chore. Like they shouldn't yeah. be like vegetables that you have to swallow. Like, yeah. should, like these things are exciting and they're yeah. important. So yeah. Um, I hope that it comes across mm. that way. And the last thing that I wanted to ask about was the way that the film was actually made. So there's there's mm. interviews. Um, I think there was a lot of improv. Um, and in the film itself, there's, it's quite self-reflexive about how films are made. What were you trying to break down, and what structures of filmmaking were you trying to break down with that? Um, yeah, a lot of things. I mean, I'm, I'm, if I feel that I'm making a film in a way which someone else could do, mm. I won't do it. Um, so I'm always trying to go. What am I? I mean. You know, for better or worse, or whether I'm successful or not, I don't know. But I'm always trying to go, what am I doing differently from the way that it's been done before, before, before then? And in this case, shooting on the phone was originally a practical choice because this was always going to be a like nano budget mm. film, and I was I had access to a phone, and so I was going to use a phone. And then I realised, well, of course, these characters in these situations going on this holiday, of course, they'd be filming each other all the time. Of course, when they swap bodies, they'd be like, hey, like we're swap bodies, you know, yeah. with their phones. So it just made complete sense to shoot it like that. And also it made sense for the story, which I didn't want to be, you know, like my white experience of identity politics. Yeah. I kind of wanted it to be everyone's experience and contributing to something different. And so relinquishing that power that, you know, often we have all that control and all of, you know, pointing the camera and saying, look here, look here, and giving that over to the cast and sharing it amongst them um, was something that I realized was really important and mm. actually took it took the, the filmmaking process, like aligned the filmmaking process very much with what the film was about, which I think is the more you can do that, the better, and the better yeah. the result will be. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Thank you very much. For Thank, you. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. nice question. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay. Thanks. You good?